we call a unnamed North Auburn Trib tributary, unless somebody else has got a name for this creek. It's the one that flows from uh, the around the mall area, and then it flows down to Hickory Dickory, crosses under the uh, uh, the um, what is it called East University, and then uh, hits flows into Saugahatchee Creek. But uh, do, does anybody know what this watershed is that we're in? Besides, don't answer Ron, don't answer Bill, <laughs> Katie. Do, do y'all know what watershed we're in right now? Don't answer William. Any? That's right, yeah, Saugahatchee. And uh, I got a little handy dandy map here. Um, this is the Saugahatchee watershed. Um, outlined in orange and we're right in right in here somewhere this this is a tribute this is a tributary right here that we're going to be working on and this is about the Saugahatchee is about 220 square miles and then it flows basically about due west and flows into the hits the Tallapoosa at Yates Lake and um, so we've been working in this watershed uh, for several years um, I work with uh, Dr. Bill Deutsch, which is, if Bill would raise his, raise his hand, I work with Alabama Water Watch, and you may have uh, heard of Swamp, the Saugahatchee Watershed Management Plan. Has anybody heard of Swamp? Ron has. <laughs> but uh, we've been working for uh, several years now on trying to clean up the creek, um, and Swamp is a ADEM 319 funded. The funding actually comes from EPA. Uh, region 4 in Atlanta um, through their 319 uh, non-point source watershed program and uh, so the project basically is trying to mitigate uh, pollutants flowing into Saugahatchee and if you didn't know Saugahatchee is actually listed on ADEM's impaired list it's called the 303D list and uh, it's listed for a couple reasons the, the main reason is uh, too much, too many nutrients, too much phosphorus, and where where do you think all this phosphorus would come and be coming from? Right here, right here, right from Stephen's house. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that that's true, uh, partly true. Um, but it, if you look at the headwaters here of Saugahatchee, it's uh, it's urbanized and ur and becoming more urbanized and suburbanized very rapidly, and you all can see that by just driving around. So what you have is a uh, transition from uh, just regular natural forest condition, which forests are very good as far as preserving water quality. They act like a filtering system um, with the, the humus and the deep organic soils and the vegetation to break the rainfall. When you clear all that off and transition to streets and parking lots and, and houses and rooftops, it, you increase dramatically the, the impervious surfaces. And then what do people do with their lawns? Fertilize. They want them to be beautiful and they fertilize. So you go from a natural forested system to a, a system that has a lot more runoff and um, a lot more inputs as far as uh, fertilizers. And phosphorus is the big culprit in Saugahatchee as well as uh, um, excessive organic matter and um, look, which leads to low dissolved oxygen when it de decomposes in the water. And let me see, I have another uh, visual here. This is, we've been working, you may have heard about some of these projects. We, we work on uh, education outreach. We do a lot of work with our and Viroscape at City Fest and, and uh, uh, Keep Opelika Beautiful's uh, Garden in the Park and so on. We've been done work in the Opelika Middle School stream restoration. We partnered with the City of Auburn and the City of Opelika on projects. Rainwater Harvest, this was done over in Opelika. There's a great example at Kerry Woods School on Sander Street of a really nice uh, rainwater harvest system if you want to see that. Um, so we've been doing both outreach and on-the-ground projects um, in our swamp project. 
trying to minimize the amount of fertilizer and the amount of just stormwater runoff coming from the uh, from the watershed. Uh, just a few other things. Ron is very familiar with this. We put out a publication on the Saugahatchee a few years back, and it's got a lot of information on the the citizen activities, the community activities, a lot of water monitors, Alabama Water Watch train monitors, uh, monitoring all the way from above Opelika all the way down to Yates Lake. And uh, the citizens do a lot more things. There's going to be a cleanup March 10th, stream cleanup, if anybody uh, wants to get involved with that, just give me a call or uh, call the Water Watch office. And you, if anybody wants one of these pubs, be, you're more than welcome to grab a publication and brochures. This is the swamp brochure telling about our swamp program. Alabama Water Watch brochure telling about the Alabama Water Watch program. And Bill and Ron are also very involved with this. This is Save Our Saugahatchee, which is the citizen monitoring group that, that works to um, preserve the Saugahatchee Creek. Uh, and I'm just going to say a few more things. I had a couple handouts here. Um, do, do, have you, are, are any of you familiar with this creek back here? Have you seen this creek? Um, you'll see it shortly. The big problem with this creek, which Stephen can tell you is, uh, and the reason we're here today is it's badly eroded. Um, and I had some maps, but I can't find them right now. But why would why would this creek be so eroded? Does anybody have an idea besides Bill and Ron and Stephen and William? Oh, it rained too much. Yeah, but why? How come all the other streams wouldn't be eroded? Why? Why this one in particular? Something killing the roots. Killing the roots. A lot of development around it's got a lot of sedimentation. That's the main reason. If you drive drove the Opelika Highway and looked, um, that's the watershed. If you're heading to Opelika and look left at the mall, what's most of the mall other than buildings? Asphalt. Asphalt. That's why this. Yeah. This this stream uh, has transitioned from a a natural kind of. Uh, easy flowing stream to a, a torrent. If you get a two, three inch rain, uh, four inch rain, it's raging. And that's all just because of increased runoff. And so when you, when you reach a level of, they say 10% uh, or more impervious surfaces, then you're gonna have problems in your stream environment. And you'll see in a minute when I shut up that we definitely have some, uh, <laughs> problems back here. In closing, if you're interested, anybody's interested, we're having a lawn care workshop, Smart Yards lawn care workshop on March 17th at Town Creek Park. And the first 50 attendees get a free Smart Yards manual. So be there early. And the other thing I wanted to announce is if you live in Auburn and in your last water bill, you got there was an uh, open line publication of the city. There was a little article uh, announcing the Smart Yards Incentive Program. And that's also a swamp program. If you have runoff problems on your property, um, we have financial assistance to improve or mitigate stormwater runoff problems on residential and commercial properties. The only kicker is you got to live in Saugahatchee Creek. So if you're interested in either one of these, just Come see me, I got flyers on those. And in closing, um, I just like- Everything might point out, the Saugahatchee watershed is kind of everything, pretty much everything north of the railroad track. Right, if you're going to uh, Lo Chipoca, Highway 14, which turns into Martin Luther King Avenue, coming into Auburn, everything north of that is Saugahatchee, everything south of that on the campus, Auburn campus, is Parkerson Mill Creek, which is another great watershed management plan that Eve can talk about. And just a plug for this, Smart Yards, this is a great publication that uh, Extension put out recently within about the past year. 
It's got a, a lot of great information on it about minimizing costs of landscape and lawn uh, maintenance, about rainwater harvest, about rain gardens, about appropriate plant selection, blah, blah, blah. You can see this digitally at smartyards.org or you can get a hard copy on campus.